what were some of the misconceptions you think people have about Christians? That I just my answer. I have to remember again. Try and remember. You were saying that people think you can't be a Christian and then. That was one of them. The second one I wanted to say now, so what you need to think about Try, try remember, try remember. What do you the think? Most, think? Being a Christian, you can't have fun. Uh-huh. Very false. And what's your definition of fun? Listen, have you ever been to a Christian club? No. Hey, I'll take you to one where you come. It's, pa- oh Lord, it's the best. How is it like Christian club? It's literally, club and what do they do instead then? of smoking and drinking you're worshiping god and you're praising god and christian club like... show me your blame let me google it go ahead christian club in georgia yeah. i haven't sent you the instagram link so you guys smoke shisha what else you guys do Instead of doing that, because okay, Atlantis Christian instead Club. Of doing that, you don't listen. Atlantis Christian Club. So shall we say that there is a Christian club? We all think that clubs are bad places to go, like where you go and party and drink and okay. smoking. Like it's called the Arc ATL. Yes, I've seen it right now. I just searched it up. The Arc ATL, yeah. So you think having fun as a Christian means like singing songs? I just say have just singing songs, but it's like you say, you say you want to get the experience of clubbing, but you're a Christian, go to a Christian club. Okay. Alright, and what else do you think? That God, that God, just because you're a godly Christian, you will not go through hardships. Mm-hmm. That is the whole Actually, thing. Actually, Christianity means... Don't let, every, don't let anyone ever deceive you about that. Okay. Actually, Christianity is not about being blessed, being... I'm recording it, you know it. You know I'm recording it. So actually, Christianity is not about blessings, prosperity, riches, and all that. Christianity is more about. I've told you this thing before, where I read a book titled "Losing, Suffering, Dying," and it's for by Dakiwood Mills, and it talks about how most people think Christianity is all about blessings, prosperity. Give me this, amen, amen. But well, yes, that, that comes along with following God. But yes. It's not- it's, that is not the call because Jesus Christ, when you look at the life he was living, he had to endure, he had to suffer, he had to go through so many pains. I'm not saying that you have to suffer as a Christian, but then. I've remembered my point. Mm-hmm. What was the point? I'm sorry because you're so nah, feel free. Remembered. Mm-hmm. That to be a Christian, it means you have to be perfect. You have to be perfect. Perfect to be a Christian. Okay. Because you know, a lot of people I've spoken to said the reason why mm-hmm. they don't want to commit to them, themselves to God because God will want them. Mm-hmm. Absolutely not true. Mm-hmm. They feel like they are not perfect enough for God to want them. God wants our imperfections. He doesn't want the perfection. Okay. There's no, you're human. There's no way. Okay. He calls, he anoints the called. He doesn't call the anointed. In other words, you understand? Yeah. Okay. I'll go ahead and film my video because I don't want to cut it, but I can stay on so that you bring a suggestion. So what is up, guys? Welcome back to another interesting video. Today, I was just... I don't know, memorizing on the word of God and it just dawned on me that I have a book on misconceptions about Christianity titled So You See. I wrote this book in 2021 or 2022 and I felt like coming back to it to share with you guys some of the things that I included in this book and it talks about the misconceptions most people have about Christianity or most people had about Christianity. I'm not going to lie but I grew up in a Christian home, both parents are pastors but then there were certain things that I didn't really understand about Christianity until the Lord had to actually speak to me through his word, through people and then I came to a conclusion to understand. So I feel like this video will be perfect for those who have doubts about Christianity and the first thing that most people talk about is Titan. Now there's this whole debate about Titan some people say you have to give the tithes to the poor, you have to give tithes to this, you are not supposed to pay tithes, you are not supposed to do this and that. But then we'll go back to the scriptures since the Bible is the basic or the basis for Christianity. When you read the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says that bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house, that is the house of God. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, Malachi chapter 3, verses 10. Also, it goes ahead, I wouldn't talk about the verse 11, but then it goes ahead and talks about 
how people rob God. And then they will be like, how did we rob you? And God was like, in tithes and in offerings. So yes, you're supposed to pay tithes as a Christian. Tithes is literally 10% of every income you make. You have to give it back to God so that he rebuke the devourer. Now, I had this perception that people who are very rich, those who don't really you know, believe in God and stuff, they don't pay tithes, yet they are rich. Until I read this book titled, uh, most of you know this book, Rich Dad Poor Dad, he talks about tithing in it. So he said that he met someone from Jamaica, or it was, I forgot one of the counties, and the person has attributed his prosperity to him paying tithes. So even people that we think don't pay tithes because they are rich, actually pay tithes. The next thing that we'll talk about is, should we go to church as Christians? I've had a lot of friends in America who tell me that, you don't really need to go to church as a Christian. Have you heard that before? No, I don't know. What are you talking to? I'm talking about people who don't believe in going to church as a Christian. No, nobody has ever said that to me. Okay, so people run with this notion that you can serve God in your heart. And this is, it doesn't make sense to me because it's like saying you're a student, but then you don't go to school, you don't go to class, you study in your heart. It, it doesn't make sense to me. The Bible says that, and I quote, Luke chapter 2 verse 41, it says that after three days they found him in the temple, in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. The Bible also says do not forsake the gathering of the saints. If it says do not, meaning you are not supposed to miss the gathering of the saints. And where do the saints meet? The church. So as a Christian, you cannot say that, oh, you know, I'll, 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 I'll sit at home and then serve God in my heart. It doesn't make sense. The next misconception about Christianity or the next misconception people have is the church is perfect or the church is supposed to be perfect. So this is the clear example. A church is like a clinic where people come there with sicknesses, like spiritual sicknesses. Some people are struggling with gossip. People are struggling with addictions. People are struggling with this and this and that. The same way when you go to the hospital and people have cough diseases, people have you know all these diseases and you are in the hospital and let's say someone is coughing on you you don't get angry you understand them because you know they are sick and they are in the hospital for treatment that is the same way you should see the church in the church people have problems with gossip people have problems with so many things and it's up to you as a christian to know that you are in the church you are in the you are a spiritual hospital in the same way you are not perfect that is the same way they are also not perfect so ladies and gentlemen the church is not perfect the next thing that i'll talk about in this book and I'm so grateful to God that looking back two, three years ago, I, I, I never believed that I had this, this revelation to write this book because I'm looking at this book from a third person's perspective. I've gone through it like the entire cover to cover today. And I'm like, how did I manage to write these things? Because it feels, it feels like it's not my handwriting. And if you're a writer, you can relate to this. You sometimes write poems, you write some words, and you'll be like, how did I get all these things? Another misconception that I will talk about is pastors being fake. So my dad is a pastor and I can tell you from a fact that he is not a fake pastor. If you want to tell a fake pastor, you go back to the Bible. What does the Bible say? The Bible says that by their fruit, you shall know them. So when you see the fruits, the fruit is the Holy Spirit. When they are not exhibiting the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, all these things the Bible talks about, they are definitely not from God. The Bible also says that in the last days, many, and I highlight the word many because many means many. Many shall come in my name. Many can mean 20,000. Many can mean 500,000. Many. And when it says many, it means they can overshadow the right ones. So when you see people doing fake miracles, fake prophecies, sharing fake word, you should know that it didn't really start recently. In the Bible, it talks about fake prophets. Let me go straight into my Bible. It talks about fake prophets. I found the scripture, but the Bible gave a scripture about fake prophets. I don't know if I remember. I'll probably put it in the video. But the fake prophets hasn't have not been in existence just recently. They've been in the Bible. There have been so many fake prophets in the Bible. So pastors are not fake. By their fruit, you shall know them. So if the fruit of your pastor is not showing that they are sent from God or they are doing the work of God, they are definitely not from God. The next point that I'll talk about from the book, so you see, is pastors are also not perfect. Now, when there's a scandal about pastors or when you hear something about pastors, it's because maybe there's a scandal surrounding them. Oh, this pastor said this. He gave this prophecy. He didn't come to pass. This prophet said this. Oh, he's a fake prophet. He said this. He's not that. Pastors are also not perfect. It's like they are, they are vessels for God. God is using them to share messages across. And you don't expect them to be perfect. They are just sharing the word of God. They are the vessels God is using. And God also speaks to them through his word. When his word comes, it comes for everyone. It comes for pastors. It comes for lawyers. It comes for teachers. Every single person. So pastors are not supposed to be perfect. I would never expect my pastor to be perfect. 
Now, I would want us to talk about this, but for the sake of time, I want this video to be very short. It talks about why pastors take money. You know, Christians are more about, you know, why should the church be taking money, blah, 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 all these things. I also have a section on pastor's kids and stuff because I'm a pastor's kid and I'm not shy to say this, but my dad is a pastor and I'm proud to be a pastor's kid. So, yeah, I'll quickly talk about this then, then we'll end the video here. I'll come back to it. We are talking about these things most people think are not real. We're going to talk about miracles. So, you know how people think miracles are staged? I've watched so many videos and then the comment is like, miracles are staged, you know, people talk about miracles, they are not this, they are not that. I'll take you guys back to the Bible. When you read the book of Matthew chapter 12 verse 38, it says that true miracle is an event in the eternal world. Sorry, that is the chapter title. Let me find the scripture. Did I miss the scripture? Matthew 12 38. Matthew 12 38. Let's go to the scripture. Matthew 12 38. It says that true Christ Though Christ is always ready to hear and answer holy desires prayers, yet those who ask amiss, amiss, ask and have not, signs were granted to those who desired them to confirm their faith, as Abraham and Gideon, but denied to those who demanded them to excuse their unbelief. This talks about miracle. This also talks about miracle, which is the book of John 2, 18. John chapter 2, verses 18. What does it say? It says that, Then Jesus answered the Jews and said unto them, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? So people were doubting miracles in the Bible. You know of the miracle of Jesus Christ turning five loaves of bread and two fishes into, for 5,000 people. You know of the miracle how Jesus Christ healed the blind, the sick, and all those things. None of these things were staged. These things were real. Miracles are still happening. I've experienced miracles in my life so many times. I've been in the church all my life and I've seen real miracles happen. You do not see, I don't believe that grown men would come and stand in front of a church and then lie that, oh, they, they were not healed. I don't, I'm not sure they would do that. So miracles are actually real. Miracles do exist. Believe in miracles and then you're going to experience that. Time wouldn't allow me to go deep into miracles because I'm trying to keep this video under eight minutes. But basically that is it. If you need a copy of this book, the account which this book was published was, I think, has been banned by now. It has been closed by Amazon. I don't know. I'll check. But then I can make, I can republish it anytime. So when I do that, I'll link it in the description box. If you want to get a copy, ebook, soft copy, or audio, you could probably get it. So yeah, that is basically it for today's video. If you guys want me to make a part two of this video, I'll be glad to do that. This video was unplanned. I was just talking to my friend and I'm like, let me just film a YouTube with it. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. And always remember that your future can be better than your current situation. And only you have the power to make it so. 